No, I had to get coffee there for a second. Okay, so here's the thing. We only got to go to the New York International Auto Show this year for one day, so time was money. We had to make like Christian and Bale by like five o'clock. Because this isn't like Croc Rock in Allentown or the Smoky Bones in Burn Township. No one here walked down the aisle to Buck Cherry. And let me tell you something else, Mean Gene. On press day, nobody's stealing ship knobs off a of Miata. Seriously, these people exist at auto shows. Stainless steel, brushed aluminum, with or without inscription. The more disrespectful attendees tend not to care. They want to be Dominic Toretto, and they're mad that the world won't let them. So this is why I was glad I got to go on a press day, because 98% of the people at an auto show will be awesome, but there's always that 2% who are just there to screw around, or let their kids track dirt onto the seats in the new CTSV, or place Big League Chew on the dash. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but an auto show opens itself up to this kind of hyperbole because that's exactly what's being peddled here. Hyperbole. Take the Honda press conference, for instance. They keep you waiting there for a couple of minutes with indistinct hope rock blasting over the PA system, and then come the speeches with all the requisite buzzwords. Youth brand, built in North America, fuel efficiency, bowel obstruction, five doors, and, you know, the usual stuff. I get that it's a press conference, but there's something sterile about all of this. Where's the passion? I should be able to hear your boner for this car in your voice. But instead, it's this dry-ass reading from a teleprompter. And the audience responds with similarly dry indifference. I have no idea what Gordon Lightfoot is saying in the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Picture it. A ribbon of confusion stretches out across the back of the room. Blindness prevails under a fabric of amused indifference as everyone is crowded together, struggling to get a peek, a listen, an idea. The show layout is as thick as a Brunswick stew and a scattershot in its composition as a yinzer salad. A riot of inadequate applause rings out. We respect you, but we're not enthused. That was the vibe I was getting. Like we were stuck in a room with an audience full of gamers who were still processing their feelings about nuking Megaton. And yet, it all changed once a guy stepped forward. Guy Melville Brown is a Honda concept whiz who looks like Wes Anderson but sounds like a distant Lannister relation. And in his voice was all the passion for the new Civic. The 2016 model was described as charismatic and beyond the superficial. A street fighter that stirs the very embers of your heart. The speech was packed with lines only a British guy could get away with. And yet, I felt the passion for the Civic oozing off the guy, like pus from the spot that Crystal Tickle Taint put her mouth on the night before. His enthusiasm built to a crescendo. The sound of a song shouted from the mountaintop, like a dad recalling that big mouth bass he caught in the summer of aught nine. It was this big. No, it was this big. And you applaud him because even though you feel like you're being fed a line, you respect his passion. You see, auto shows are a very delicate ecosystem. You don't want to upset the balance by sitting on your hands the entire time like that jerk who thinks he can get away with being an asshole just because he's on the spectrum. There's an expectation of participation. Otherwise, they wouldn't let you get in all the cars. Hell, they wouldn't even let you get a press badge in the first place. You gotta straddle the mechanical bull of humility and hold on for dear life. With that said, there were more than just press conferences. There were really hot floor models everywhere. And also good-looking girls. Seriously, though, I'm pretty sure Hometown 10 is a New York 2. It's sensory overload in the craziest way. There are always pretty girls to distract you, just as Harvey Keitel always hangs dong in his movies. And just as every Star Wars game has a Hoth level. Bigwigs hung out in the Infinity Lounge, which I swear sounds like it belongs on the Citadel in Mass Effect, but eh, it doesn't really look nearly as cool. There you'd find executive faces creased with laugh lines from excessive glad handing. They're dead inside from answering all the same old questions every year. Maybe they've been dead for centuries, like an old tree that looks fine on the outside, but when you cut it open... But hey, at least they've got people here grinding and brewing coffee right in front of your face. Other auto shows have coffee that tastes like a drug test for work. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the rest of Honda's humble braggery. Oh, why, yes, these are all of our awards from Kelly Blue Book. Sure, it's the Nintendo power of automotive dick measuring, but damn it, it has merit. Meanwhile, over at Acura, the new NSX was there looking like a flavored condom on wheels. The kind of car a weightlifter drives because he doesn't realize the only people who give a frozen, soaring shit about muscles are other dudes. Look at this jacket! 
It's framed in light like it's the friggin' bat suit. Danger zone! They say when a man marries his mistress, a new position opens up. And so it was with BMW, as the 1970 Alpina, Alpina? Alpina, was plopped right next to the 2016 version like the before and after photo in a Nutrisystem ad. Although I'd say it's really more like a plastic surgery brochure, where the before and after are both beautiful but for different reasons. I mean, come on, honey, you don't need a nose job. I think it looks exotic. Some guy is walking around in a too large suit. He's very conspicuous, a Vincent Adultman type who's clearly here to do a business. Yeah, the majority of this is people watching, but I read too much Henry James in my day not to leap at the opportunity. I mean, really, I'm not sure what else to say. I'm guessing Mr. Regular's video is going to talk far more about the cars than mine, so I mostly chatted about the experience because, well, I didn't really get to get in as many cars this year due to the how frequently we kept moving around. Well, that and also because I wasn't nearly as bowled over by the experience this year as last. I absolutely loved it here, don't get me wrong. I'm an absolute whore for a car show. And I'd love to come again next year and really get a few days out of it. But it's hard to enjoy yourself on the clock. Like that Mike and Ike sized section at the tip of the condom that catches all the cum. A press badge halts whatever irresponsibility your enthusiasm might produce. Press day inspires your best behavior, even if the butterflies in your stomach are the size of hawks. This isn't like college, where you go out to the bar with your crew, your confidence with the opposite sex enhanced by the knowledge that your night won't end with one rejection as long as you've still got your bros with you. I, I got my guys, my guys. This is what men do! There's an occasional sense of displacement involved with an auto show. You don't always get that feeling of belonging here that you get at the bar with your guys. College friends are the cocaine of belonging, cut with the Drano of potential, while the New York International Auto Show is a sort of sink or swim atmosphere. In one place, you'll fit like you've never fit anywhere else. In the other, you'll be humming Stranger in Paradise the entire time. Sure, an auto show is an ephemeral experience, but it's also kind of daunting, especially if you're going to make a video out of it. You won't know what shots you'll need until you write the damn thing, but you can only write notes and try your best to freestyle. But this isn't King of the Dot or Grind Time Now, and the swollen abscess of high expectations isn't going to shrink just because you're there one day less than you were the year before. So you have to do your best to hit up as many automakers as you can, see as many press conferences as possible, and keep shooting until your batteries die and your memory cards fill. But you know what? That's kind of what I love about these auto shows. It inspires productivity, and even in its dullest moments, genuine enthusiasm.